ma chambre à la forme d'une cage. Le soleil passe son bras par la fenêtre. Les chaussures à ma porte comme les petits soldats qui veulent me prendre. Neville and David from the Melbourne Cabaret Festival. They actually invited me and asked me to MC and perform at the closing gala of the 2013 Cabaret Festival. And they were so impressed with, um, with my performance that they actually approached me and said, oh, have you thought about turning your book into a cabaret show? Met with Matt and his mum at a cafe, pitched the idea gave me our credentials as producers, and uh, he said yes. So that was the start of it. It's French. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, welcome to my show. Welcome to my mind. The process from there was um, getting a good team around Matthew um, to pull the whole show together. So that was a music director, Jeremy Brennan, director Nigel Turner, Turner Carroll, and someone to, to turn the book into a script that was suitable for live performance, and that was Spanky. <laughs> felt that um, maybe there needed to be somebody else in the show with him and my kind of alter ego character came through. I wasn't necessarily going to be in the show per se uh, but what happened was we decided to take the honours off Matt and to be able to explain to an, a predominantly um, non addict audience what the nature of addiction is like. Addiction is so, so powerful. It's like, I mean, in the show I represent it as, I, I personify it because it really is a relationship that you have to struggle with inside your own head. Because the book's about you know, 400 pages, and to get that down to an hour show where you've got eight songs in there as well, um, it really took some, some careful refining. My hidden depression set me off on a journey to discover external happiness. So I started to hit the gay bars in Brisbane when I was 14 years old. kind of structured it at the beginning of um, how a dive would happen, so the preparation, the approach, the takeoff, the flight, and then the um, breaking, like going through the water, and then surfacing again. And we kind of thought of it as, um, you know, in the story of my chronology as well, you know, the approach, which would be the childhood, the takeoff, which would be the start of my diving career, the flight, which would, well, I guess, and the descent, which would be the, you know, the peak which would be Beijing, and then the downward spiral, which would be the falling and going, breaking through and hitting rock bottom, and then resurfacing out of the drug addiction.
You have to be perfect so that people will like you, people will love you. Right now, your imperfection incarnate. Sometimes it's never quite enough. When we first saw him, extremely green, he didn't know anything about the theatre really, so um, that's been an amazing thing seeing him grow to the performer that he is now. He's like, he's like a seasoned performer now, and which is a it's ridiculously huge um, task. Uh, and that was, for me, the most fulfilling thing probably on the whole, whole project is seeing where he was in the beginning to where he is now. I guess I'm just that donkey kid from Brisbane who pulled off something extraordinary on the world stage. I'm just that donkey kid from Brisbane and somewhere on the world stage. Me, 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 that old chestnut. Well, listen, Moi, you are a fake, a phony, and a total sham. Your win at the Olympics was a complete fluke, and if you don't repeat it in London, you're going to be exposed for the total phony that you are. Your world ranking is actually number two. So guess what, man? You ain't the best at anything in the world after all. This old black dog is hounding me. I thought it was fabulous. I mean, I was laughing and crying, and it's really Matthew Mitchum so bloody talented that everything was perfect. In the light of a cinema screen, I hide. Oh, we just really loved this show. We've seen quite a few of the cabaret festival shows in our time, and, and this is uh, really up there with one of our favourites. I could kick that black dog. just amazing. Uh, made me laugh, made me cry, and his singing is just amazing. We had the best night. He has, he has warmth, integrity, he sings well, his story is all-encompassing, it's moving, tragic, but we're it's just gold. It's something it's not. And the worst part is thinking it might never... I mean, I guess that's why I embarked upon this whole journey of personal discovery and, you know, why I'm doing this show is because of that journey of going through that relationship and then breaking up with, with Tina. It's like, it really is like the hardest boyfriend you ever broke up with, you know, it's and it's... It really is an emotional breakup when you break up when you try and break up with an addiction, and it's you know the the ties are never severed because it's not like you never have a relationship with her again. It's like you've always got a relationship with that addiction. It's just whether or not you act on it. Um, so it is a very very painful, very long separation process. Yeah.